Hi and welcome, it's Les Arnott here and today we're going to be looking at taking portraits in a small room in a house. Now that of course causes a few problems. We need gear that will fit in the house obviously and lenses and cameras that will do the job and basically any camera will do the job. Uh, it's selecting the lens that's important. So when I'm taking the shots I'll be using a 50mm Canon lens with a Canon camera and using a 50mm will mean I can get a lot closer to the subject and feel my frame much better than if I've got something like an 80 or a 100 or a 200mm lens where I wouldn't stand a chance in this room because it's only about 10 foot long. So we're working in a small enclosed area. And this is handy because if you're the type of photographer who goes to people's houses and takes shots, you know, you never know what type of situation you're going to be in when you get there, whether you've got enough room to set things up. So it's important to try it out in a small room and see if it works. We'll be using really professional looking um, flash lighting that really isn't expensive to do. Uh, there's a bit of cost involved but we're working quite low end. The lens itself that we're using with the camera is one of Canon's cheapest lenses so it's the 50mm 1.8 and it costs just over £100. Sometimes you can pick it up less than £100, which I actually do remember the first one that I bought was about £90, they have gone up slightly. So, a cheap lens, any camera really will do because low-end cameras, um, you know, they'll give great results for what we're doing, we're not using ISOs or anything like that, we'll be shooting at 100 ISO, so we haven't got to worry about grain or anything like that, and most cameras will perform well at 100 to 200 uh, ISO with no problems. In fact most of them only start at 200 ISO so we'll actually use that as a standard today. We'll shoot at 200 ISO. So really important is the camera and the flash and how we talk to each other between the two units. So I'll be using, uh, I'll just need to get this, run off screen and back on again. So I'll be using a Canon flash and with it set on the camera I'll be using a remote control for the flash and that is ideally what you need. You need to be working with the flash away from the subject and away from the camera not set on the camera which will give you flat results. We want some magical lighting, we want something to to look professional and very good. So it's always a way to go get the flash off the camera this will be set on a stand with an umbrella diffuser and we'll have a look at that gear a little bit later and these can come at all sorts of prices this is my own it's quite expensive one this one but you can get uh, flash controllers and uh, receivers really cheap for about 12 pound even like you know you and they work they work great especially with the type of flash photography that we're doing which will be manual so a really simple system but the best. Okay so the next stage we'll be looking at the equipment for the for the background. And basically all that, in fact more than we need, fits in this one bag. So I can carry this around location to location and it's got all the equipment that I need for the background and the brackets and the light stands, everything is in there. So it's nice and mobile, you can carry it around. And I say if you're shooting outside and you're using flash, because flash is great for, for doing portraits outside as well and using it for filling flash, you don't need all the tripod stands and everything, the, the lighting stands, sorry, you don't need all that. So you can get a really light system that you can carry about and and be able to get some, uh, get some great lighting. Okay, so I've opened my bag, I've tipped all the contents out, and what I've got in there basically is four stands. Um, I'll probably, in most cases, you'll only need three. We need two to set up the background and to place the background on, and we need one to put the flash and the diffuser on. Um, and you can get away with that. Sometimes I use a fourth, and the reason I use a fourth is if I want to use, I've got a foldable um, 
diffuser it. The reflector. Sometimes I might want to put this on a stand at a set distance uh, just to reflect some light from the other side of the sock box. So if I've got the sock box to this side, I could have this over here on a stand. Now, in a lot of cases, you don't need that because if you're taking a portrait of your head and shoulders, you can actually get the model to hold this underneath them. So, whichever side you want. We'll be using this and we'll be using the gold side just to reflect a little bit of light from the other side of the, the actual soft box and just bounce a bit of this golden light onto me, which just softens the light a bit more than using white, which is a bit hard. So we will be using that, but like I say, I'll be holding that on my lap when I take the photos of myself and, and just holding it in a position to, to get the reflection that I need. So, the stands. Obviously you can buy any quality you want. If it's something you do a lot, probably go for the better quality. These are sturdy enough for me and these are made by newer. Uh, they're not overly expensive, I think about 13, 14 pounds, something like that each. Um, you know, but they do the job, they're sturdy, quite sturdy. And adjustable, which is important, obviously. So, we won't be working too high because I'm going to be sitting down for the shot because I only want a head portrait so I don't need me standing up so that just makes it easier to set up I'm just going to guess the height for now so I'll pop that one up there and I'll put this stand next to it These of course fold up fairly flat and they fit in the bag nicely. So we've got the two stands. Now you can buy backgrounds already set up. I like to be cheap and use my own system <laughs> um, for various reasons. But I want to be mobile so rather than have all the metal stands and everything, what I've got is some clips. So these are metal clips, really powerful clips. These are great for all different types of uses. So, you know, you can use them to hold your diffuser on a stand. So if you not fit on the stand like that, and they'll hold your diffuser in place and you can place that one. Sometimes you can even use that as a backdrop for a headshot. So really useful, really useful tools. So these just slip on the top there. I've got screws, so they just go on like that, and you just tighten that up. And place that over there. I'll do the same with this one. And then, my cheapest uh, bit of kit, let's just reposition this. I don't use a metal, a metal bar across the top. What I use, because again I want to be mobile, is one of these tenter temp poles. Now you can get these off Amazon. They're about twelve pound for this size. I think this is eleven mil. And the nice thing about this is it folds up, and they're really light, much lighter than metal like plastic aluminium, uh, plastic fiberglass type material and I can simply put that over there and that is well enough sturdy to take quite a bit of weight and also long enough for, for most backgrounds so well enough sturdy for what I've got because the one I'm using is quite a cheap background this is about 13 pound I think off uh, Amazon I'm just going to hold that up there 
I'm just going to clip it into this. Just to hold it up in place. Okay. Now, the problem is with these is you do get creases in now. I will go over editing the photographs to get rid of those creases because it's not always possible to get them all out. We can stretch this with some clips, so I'll put some clips here. Again these made by different companies but these are really handy. So these clips allow you to throw them away. <laughs> Not cheap, by the way. Okay, so then obviously you can go all down the side. Now I'm not going to go all through that while I'm videoing it. I'll just set that up and then we'll go on to the next stage. Okay, so we've now set up our little stand and background it's not a brilliant background but it's uh, it'll do the job and i say there are creases in there we'll get rid of those in post-production it's quite often with these cheap setups you get uh, some creases in there so better backgrounds are probably better and you won't have that problem or you cannot actually use an iron on these on, on most materials okay so more importantly the setup now so the flash is going to have to be held on the stand so we have another stand and the flash holder will sit on the stand now the problem is with that is these flash holders are not brilliant and the reason for that is when we put this on and we touch that Basically we're going to be using an umbrella and the umbrella that will tighten up, the umbrella fits in a hole and then you can adjust it. Now the problem is with that is where the umbrella goes in the flash is this much higher than the actual place where the umbrella goes in. So in other words when you put it inside the soft box or inside the umbrella it's off centre. The flash is up here and the centre will be here of the umbrella. That is not good. We don't want that. We want the flash to be mounted more or less bang in the middle. So therefore, I never use those. Also, it's a bit of a weak point. When you're on there, if your flash gets knocked and that, it can quite easily, you can snap your flash if you're not careful. So a much more professional and not very expensive option is a holder like this. So this is an S-type mount. Uh, with a bower mount on it, what's called a bower mount, these can you can snap things onto this like a snoot or, or whatever different diffusers will fit to that. But the nice thing about it is the flash simply just goes in there and you tighten up this bracket. You don't need to over tighten it obviously else you'll push your flash. That's nice. So that holds the flash much more safer, much better and that fits on the stand and it's adjustable so you've got this handle here and you can set it to any angle. So a much better system than using the other one and the nice thing about this is the umbrella goes in here so it's almost central with the actual flash. The flash is going to be sitting in the middle of the soft box or the umbrella so that's really good. So I'm going to set that up now and put it onto the stand and that can be at any angle then which is nice because obviously you want the umbrella to go through there. So having got that on there we simply attach that to the stand. We'll adjust the height later. I don't want it too high because I want it to hide where to set it up nicely. Now when I put this on, one thing 
I want to be sure of is that I set it there you go, so it just fits on top of the stand, that tightens up. I want to make sure first of all that I'll level that up so that with one of the legs going outwards so the weight is nicely distributed uh, so that, that's important. We want this set the flash will be bouncing inside the actual umbrella. So we want this set like that angle, 45 degrees. Because what we want is a nice 45 degree angle light coming down onto the subject. That just needs to go up a bit. There we go. So that is set now 45 degrees. And the flash basically will bounce this way into the umbrella. And I'll show you the umbrella because these are a brilliant to be able to carry around, they're nice and light. So this is the umbrella, I'll say all of this equipment fits into the bag that I showed you earlier. I'll just take this out. These are Wally Max Pro, just be able to search for those. And basically it's an umbrella, but the umbrella has got a diffuser liner on there. So what happens with this is the flash bounces into this, inside this, and then it's diffused when it's thrown out. So it gives a nice soft light. So I'm just going to pop that inside the hole there. We've got a little adjustment here. In there, tighten this up. Let's just bring this down a bit so it's easy to see. And this basically just goes up. You need to, of course, put the umbrella up. And then we bring this down. Pulls over the zip here, just tighten the zip up, and tighten this up, and go out of the way. Right, so what we're going to be doing with this is we'll be doing some what's called Rembrandt style lighting. And what Rembrandt style lighting is basically is Getting the 45 degree angle that will throw light down onto my head and cause a shadow here and just give us a little patch a triangle of light on this side of the face, uh, this side of the face, which they call the Rembrandt triangle. So that's basically quite a classical type of style to use. And to do that, I say it has to be 45 degree, 45 degree slightly in front of me, and I know the light's coming in the right direction, it needs to be a bit higher. So that this is pointing towards me. That's how I know I've got that 45 degree angle at the right height. So I'm quite tall. There we go. So that will be throwing the light it's 45 degree in front of me, 45 degree angle coming down. I want it to feather slightly. I may actually move this back at a stage to get some even more dramatic lighting by throwing it to the side, but we'll play with that. Now the important thing to remember is we depict what we want. So, and by that, what I mean is we shoot
in manual mode on the camera and we say right we want we don't want it grainy so we want a low ISO and in this case we're going to use 200 most cameras these days some will only go down to 200 ISO so that's why I'm, I'm using that uh, some of the cheaper cameras but really important we you know all cameras shoot well at 200 ISO so it's fine to use that it'll also mean we don't need quite so much power out of the flash but the important thing is we want to depict what settings we want on the camera and then when we tell the camera what we want all we have to do then is adjust the flash to give us the right amount of lighting so the, the camera itself is set in manual mode and the flash is set in manual mode and all you need to do to adjust the flash when it's working in manual mode so you need to, to read your manual on that just to, to, to look at your flash settings and see how to change it to manual mode and usually you've just got a plus somewhere a button or whatever just to, to press and all that does is decrease or increase the level of light that the flash throws out so if you're underexposed you need to turn it up and if you're overexposed you need to turn it down it's as simple as that until you get the available light what you also do is when you think you've got it set right by looking at your photographs is you check the histogram on your camera now if you don't know how to do that find out read your camera manual and see how to display the histogram on your camera so you take the shot you look at the histogram and make sure that you're not peaking to the right hand side you'll see a little mounting display what I call a mounting of the levels of your image and if they're peaking to the right hand side and, and clipping then you're losing your highlights and that's really important quite often when I'm doing this type of photography which is low key I'm actually bringing it down a little bit so it's, it's nowhere near peaking I'm just bringing it down a touch so the highlights aren't overexposed you will get when you're working with a low key photo you will probably get blacks that are peaking and that's not so important because that's going to be the background and, and surrounding area it's not going to be the face which is going to be the highlights so it's the highlights that are really important we don't want to, to be losing any highlights we want to be able to get back any detail in the face that we want so really important note on that so what I would suggest what settings you use is entirely up to the user I'm going to be using the camera fairly wide open um, so I'm going to be using a 50mm uh, lens I'm going to be shooting at 200 ISO so I set all these in the manual mode you need to look through your manual and see how to set your ISO up and, and all the manual settings and then we say what should speed do we want well I know most flashes work okay about 125 so just to stop any argument we're going to use one two fifth of a second for the exposure and we're going to be shooting fairly wide open so I've got a, an f1.8 let's shoot at f2 and obviously with your cameras or whatever lens you, you're using you probably want to shoot fairly open to, to diffuse the background a little bit now I'm very close to the background and that's not a good thing I like to put the background further back but of course we're working in a small room now if we worked that and, and I was shooting fairly wide open it would diffuse this a little bit and we wouldn't see the creases and whatever it would be well in the background we just want the colour and the, the bit of texture on there the, in the different colours that's all we want, we don't want that to be sharp, we want the face to be sharp so we'd want to diffuse that, now it's not going to diffuse much because it's right, more or less right behind me so if you have got the room take that back as much as you can so that it's you know you can see it all when you're taking your shot you're not getting you're getting exactly what you want without seeing parts of the wall the surrounding area you've just got the background in there but try and do that if you can take it back as far as you can now I can't take it far back but I will show you later on how to edit the photos and a, a way just to get rid of those creases that show so and diffuse the background a little bit so that's what we'll be doing I'll be taking some shots in a moment so remember we've got the flash set on manual and when we take a shot we look at the shot now when you turn the flash on you don't know what setting you're going to be needing when you turn it on and you turn it to manual usually it's on full power so it's one to one and probably that will be way too powerful so if it is all you do is on your manual flash you take your shot you look at your shot and if it's too bright you take it down, you check your histogram, really important, you don't want to be going over on the highlights. So on manual settings, using the flash, 
that's all you do. You set the camera to what you want and then you tell the flash to give you the amount of light that you want for the settings on your camera. So basically you'll be taking that down so you've got the exposure right. Once you've done that, it's set. And we'll be taking out any ambient light that's in the room because we're using the flash. Um, and the flash will have power if, you, if you're working in the house, you know, in a, in a house or a studio or whatever. The ambient light will not matter. And you can check that. So once you've got the settings that you want, if you take a shot... Uh, and you've got that ambient light and it's causing a problem and when I say take a shot, take a shot without the flash being on so you use the same settings, you take a flash and it should be black you shouldn't be able to see anything or just a little bit of maybe depending on where you're shooting but that's what you want, you want it to be black so if it isn't black there's various things you could do if you can take the ISO down to 100 you could do that you could up the aperture slightly um, make it smaller so you go up to say f7 or something like that or work your way up to that and just and just see what you get um, but you shouldn't have any ambient light you can block ambient light if you work in there so you can close the curtains that helps you know so it's going to overcome the problem straight away uh, and using the flash it will do that using those settings that I've just told you you basically should be dark enough to get rid of any ambient light. We don't want the ambient light coming into play. That's the main thing. We just want this reflector to give us any extra light that we need from the flash. So I'm going to take some shots now and I'll be putting those on the screen and then we'll talk about the shots and, and how we achieve that.